Hello and welcome to episode 556, 556 of the goddessgeek.com podcast in video form, in audio form, on Spotify, wherever you want. My name's Adam Cook and I'm joined this episode by the only one or the one and only, whichever way you want to do it, Lyle Pendle. Hello, Lyle. All right. Hello. Yes, I'm good. We're having a, a more intimate podcast this week. There's a bit of a will they, won't they energy, you know. <laughs> Via the digital. Yeah. Via the yeah. digital. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bit of this... Married men, forbidden love, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that what we're doing this week it's not the episode i was expecting but i'm gonna run with it it's fine yeah um i thought we were here to talk about some like really most anticipated games not that one oh. not that oh, one that. no no games, not that one yeah <laughs> it, no, it is weird. There's obviously only two of us. So it's slightly probably a shorter podcast this week, but the games are not shorter and the games are not smaller. Um, I don't even know if I could do an intro to give it justice because I can't... Metaphor Re Fantasio, right? Which, by the way, just for the record, I recorded the voiceover to the video review of that, never once knowing if I was actually saying that correctly. No, I have no idea, actually. Okay. You, you said it then and I'm like, well, I mean, it sounds That's sort a... of right. Probably. I, I, I sort of re-fantasio. It could be re I suppose. And I don't know what those words really mean either when having completed the game. I don't know no. what the relation to the game is. No, cause... I don't think either of those words are ever mentioned once. In, I don't no, think I don't... they're actually ever said. I mean, definitely not re But also, like, stylistically, the game's metaphor re, like, as in re. re. Listen, this, I presume... I, well, I presume that this means metaphor is like persona. So the next yeah. game will be like metaphor de fantasio. I don't know. Um, something, yeah, sure. A long time coming, this game has been. Um, the As I say, it's like the first new Atlas IP, I guess. What is it? In? Well, I mean, for a long time. For a long, a long time. time, definitely. And especially like a big like landmark RPG mm. like this. For example, because I mean, other than this, they mainly sort of go between Shin Megami Tensei and Persona, which is realistically still Shin Megami Tensei. Yeah. So, yeah, it, we, we, we're used to that. But this is them stepping out of that bubble, but not that far because it's still quite a lot like Persona. <laughs> this is the thing. Like, I don't want to get into it straight away, like, but I suppose it is the elephant in the room a little bit, isn't it? Like, if this was called Persona 6. You'd just you'd be fine. You'd be like, oh, yeah. it's persona. It's I don't totally think works. I would have been like, how dare you? What is this? It, it, listen, if they want to make another game, a third sprawling epic RPG, by all means, that's up to them. Uh, as long as it doesn't mean we're going to get like one of each all the time, because that's it's a lot of video game. Like I'm, I'm starting on a moan, but I, I, I don't mean to. But it, this is a. It's not small. It's not a little one, no. is it? No. No, this isn't a this isn't a week a weekend job. There are there are actually not enough hours in a weekend if you didn't sleep, eat, or defecate. <laughs> I mean, I played it on Steam Deck. You can play on the toilet if you really want to. It's but, fine. But it's interesting you say that because I don't. I, I played a little bit not on Steam Deck just to see running on a PC. Blah blah blah. But like, if I didn't have this on Steam Deck, realistically, not a chance. It's not, it, it, there's just no way it was going to get finished. But I did no. finish it. I did finish it. Uh, I, I have a lot of thoughts about it, and so do you. Your lot of yours are in the review, which you can obviously yeah. read on godasageek.com and on youtube.com slash godasageek, where there's a video version. I guess the question, the big question is, does it live up to the hype of being the new game from the not the Persona people that is not Persona? Uh, it kind of depends which direction you look at that, because in terms of does it live up to it as a game, it's like this game's really, really good. Like I gave it, uh, 9.5 right that was the score mm, yeah i think yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah um like it's it's well up there on my personal game of the year list i loved it from start to finish and it's a great rpg but if it's if if you're looking for oh this is going to be this really fresh different game <laughs> it is not that like it, you can't yeah. like it it does do some things differently like the whole like the combat for example is like instead of having personas that you fuse and give abilities mm. to and all that sort of usual stuff and lock new skills, instead you have archetypes, which are essentially like they're like character classes, are they? They're like they're not anything. I, I, I think I felt that they were like each one was like a third of a persona. Yeah, I can see that. And and because they're using a system called inherit inheritance or inheriting, where you um can in once you've like leveled up to level twenty, a person fucking hell, I nearly said persona straight away. 
like straight yeah. away. It's like a bit like the bonfire thing in Souls games, isn't it? Yeah, hundred. You know what I mean? It an archetype. Once you max out level twenty in an archetype, you will probably have unlocked like the next one in its lineage, mm-hmm. and you can inherit skills from the previous one. Which I I feel I don't know. I don't. You know, I'd love the developers to say if it is. Maybe they already have. It feels like the idea is that once you max out all three using inheritance, you've kind of got, like I say, the thirds combined that you can make your own what would have been a persona from the yeah, Persona like games over one a longer of the period. Characters basically yes. in the Persona yes. game, especially a side character, you know, that isn't your protagonist. 100%. But then alongside that, if you want to use inheritance to put skills from totally other that, archetypes yes, on there, fair. you can do that too. Like I spent a lot of the game with one of my characters, sort of having like a few little bits from each of these three, uh, like three different classes of the archetypes, like what sort of overall archetypes. So like I had like the brawler fist sort of moves where you use your HP and you often use... I I avoided that almost... Well, I tried it because it's one of the early ones you get. It is, yeah. But I didn't stick with it at all. Yeah, Um, so I had... So so one of my characters, yeah, was brawler for the most part, but then I'd also have some of the gunner skills on them as well. So I sort of had a few different of the melee like weaknesses for example sort of like covered and a few different like status effects that could help out and things like that and Mm. there are some like really interesting archetypes as well like there's like the merchant where yes you just throw money at enemies and it's it's like a it can't be resisted kind of damage type and it's fairly likely to get a critical which means you get an extra turn because you get extra turns when you hit weaknesses or criticals kind of like persona um but without the all-out attacks, slightly different, but, you know, same sort of thing. Um, but, like, this, it, I really like the sort of different... The, the different archetypes are all interesting, and then the way that you level them up is you better believe there's a social side to everything, <laughs> and you uh, have different people, and if you make friends with them to certain levels, you'll then be able to unlock, like, the further bits of archetypes, the stronger ones, so where you'll start having medium or severe damage spells compared to regular, all that sort of thing. So how did you feel... A- because, I don't know, I feel like almost you and I, I should, I should say, right, I really enjoyed this game. I wouldn't spend 70 plus hours on a game if I was like, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. Like I did, it, I, It's not, it's on my list currently. It's not probably as hard, I don't know actually. It's, not, it's in my top 10 currently, right? But there's yeah. a lot of biggies still to play to come. Like Silent Hill 2, we'll talk about this episode and that's very quickly creeping ever higher. Every, every time I play it, it's like, mm. but mm-hmm. one of the issues I have with the archetypes is that, and maybe... And, Christ, don't worry. This is complex. I've got. So, I feel like I've got a lot to say about this game. If that makes sense, mm. I think you I, played it for seventy hours. Yeah, you better no, have. <laughs> fair. I want to roll back a little bit and say that because uh, you did touch on this, and I, I just want to agree with you basically and say that if if anyone's coming to this as like my first Atlas game, like I've always wanted to get because I know I know the personas are never. It's like Final Fantasy, isn't it? It's like they're all, they're all a different thing. There's yeah. usually like there might be something in it that you're like, oh yeah, it's a nod like the Sid, basically. There might be a yeah. but but generally speaking, the persona games are, are different, unless it's like Persona Five, you know, the dancing version or the Yeah. But if it's called Persona Four, Five, whatever, they're they're different characters, different stories. But I do respect that people might see Oh, it's Persona Five. Oh, I, I, I really want to play the. I mean, good luck playing the really early ones these days. But you know mm. what I mean. So I yeah. do think there might be a lot of people who are like, I've always wanted to play one of these games. I've always heard people talk about these games. I, I think there are, like you said, I think there were definitely things they do differently. Definitely, there's, there's no question. It is very similar. Like the more I played of it, the more the, 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 the way I played the routine of the game, and I also think there is a little bit in there where it's like. I don't want to say resting on their laurels because I don't think that's fair because these games are bloody huge. Mm-hmm. But there are elements for me where I'm like, if I can't remove the fact I've played Persona 4, 5, 3, blah, 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 or Shin Megami Tensei, Shin Megami Tensei. I can't, I, I played them, I played spin offs, Crisis, the, the weird DS ones where they're like the grid based dungeon stuff, mm-hmm. all that stuff. I can't remove that. Like, that's in me. But I couldn't help feeling as I was playing it. Some of this stuff isn't is either a lot of information suddenly, and then you'll spend a lot of time just not you know, just doing, and and I can't help but feel like, like say for example like again if you're a Persona fan this will bring uh, you'll know what I'm talking about Lyle you'll definitely know what I'm talking about in Persona games you'll be given like a period of time where you have to do a dungeon, and I and I'm please do correct me if I'm wrong but I don't remember the game ever actually telling you you can actually just go do that dungeon now if you want. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, characters sort of say, like, hey, do you want to go to yes. the dungeon now? So there's always this element of, like, they kind of prompt you a little bit, but you have a deadline and you could feasibly think, oh, well, if I've got to do it in eight days, I'll do it in eight days. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, I was, I was I guess thinking more of the, the cutscene, that story side of things. Like, a lot of games, it's like... Um... So th- I mean, think of any open world game, right? Where you have a, a an objective that's like the the gold objective. This is the story beat objective, and uh, here's my silver ones where all little mini. And I'm going to do all of them because I don't want to lose access to them by doing the gold. But and I and I, I would argue that Persona games and Metaphor Fantasia, the actually the best thing to do is just do the story dungeon, get it done, because doing it the other way, leaving it too late you can come really, really unstuck with the difficulty if you're not, if you're struggling, if you know what I mean. Like, if you left it to the last minute and you're like, I I, I have to do this all now. Shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because basically in those sections, you're like, your, mag- your magic end points, yes. your SP, I think it is, is are um, like that. It's like your uh, resource that you have to manage. And yes. as you go through a dungeon, you'll soon run out and you'll be like, well, shit, I guess I'll have to rest and do some more tomorrow because that's kind yeah. of... The way I, the presume game you, I presume you do the same as me. Is basically you'd hit a, a story dungeon and you just go at it until you're like, I literally have no MP left, no magic left rather, um, and I don't want to use any items or I haven't got any, so I'll go off, rest, and I'll. Get... You know, some of them you can do in a one one shot or if because if you know what you're doing. You can. Um, but some of them it would yeah. be difficult. Difficult. To do yeah. shot. Pure, purely purely resources. I find more yeah. than anything, you just don't have enough magic, and that's by design and. I don't know. I'd be quite interested to see the, the the bounce rate of people. Like, I think people will either love this or, or it's because it's like a subgenre of RPG for me. Like, it's it's. I can't. What was that game you reviewed that was Persona? Bloom Town. No, no, it's even further back. It. Like it was last year. It was um. Oh God! It was one that was so close to being really cool. Loads of social stuff. Very small development team. Lots of pink is all I can remember about it. Um, I, I can't remember at all. I, 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 I review too many games. Sorry. We talked about it on the pod when we said all of this about it. Like I just, okay. I just cannot ever something ever nights. Oh, is that again? Yeah. Eternites. 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 That like it's yeah. there's there's only that I can think that comes close to doing what Atlas does on a regular yeah. basis. Like it really feels like its own genre. Yeah. Um, the the no, archetypes I themselves, I've always I just every time I got one, like I was excited to try out this new archetype. I never felt like they had quite enough of the skills I wanted. Like I felt like I was messing around with the inheriting stuff a lot. Uh, but uh, that's part and parcel. I mean, if you would play in a Shin Megami game and you like the devil stuff and all the, uh, there's a lot to these. Yeah, games. and there are always there are almost always characters in Persona games where I get their skills and I'm like, I'm not going to use yeah. them. What's the point in this? Like, like and I'll just would you know use someone else. So like, I kind of get that. Well, it's fun. I'd be curious, actually, because you mentioned the brawler. Like, I don't like um, attacks where I have to use HP. It doesn't yeah. not, not not in this game. I mean, in any game, I don't like a game where I have yeah. to spend HP to do an attack. I, I get it. It's a risk reward thing, and you've got a, someone to buff and heal them. Uh, but I, I because of that, I really left that one to the side. I'm like, mm. um, what was that? I, I want to say Trickster? Is there one called Trickster? Or, or, I no, think so. Faker. Faker. Yeah. That one at first, I was like, "There's no way I'm getting that," but that's got some seriously useful stuff in it. Like there is a, there is so many because at first when you see the image, you don't really know how many archetypes there are, and the more yeah. you play it and you realise there are like not billions, but there's a lot. There um, are there's a decent amount to experiment with, and a lot that like you won't in one playthrough you won't really use them all. Like you kind of couldn't, you know. Like there's only a limited amount of. <sighs> That's another complaint of mine because I don't think it's really very good at telling you that, like, so. So I feel like y- you and I know that Atlas games are sort of designed like once you played through it, you're probably a lot of big fans of the games will run them again and they skip the cutscenes and they do all that. I-, I don't do that. I don't. I. I, I no. It's, I don't same. replay often much anyway. But you, I don't think you could see. Well, I'm, I'm almost certain you can't see everything in a playthrough of this game, like in terms of the. See, main that's content. difficult because I think in terms of like the actual content, you can almost see everything in terms right. of like it's like there are different characters where it's like you'll get to so get all your not social links, but whatever they're called, uh, the royal uh, you, virtues. Yeah, you'll you're like getting everything to max is actually kind of a bit easier in this than something like a persona. I think like usually there's a that's couple. Fair. Of, people that I don't end up like I'm like well I'm gonna have to sacrifice this person you, yeah I'm not you have to make a choice spend my yeah. time with that person and you're yeah. kind of supposed to do that 
across multiple playthroughs usually in those sorts of games whereas in this i feel like the things you miss is like you can't use every single character class and for me that's like mm. i wouldn't do that in most games anyway it's like it's just sort of i'm picking what mm. i would like to use like i mean yes there are definitely ones where i'm like yeah, it would have been cool to see what the end of that one is but like it's just not what i picked to do so to me it didn't feel like totally it was something fair. that i missed out on really it was more something where i thought if i do ever play this in the future it's kind of cool to at least know i could kind of roll my cards a little bit differently and see how that no that is that is totally fair because i come a bit of a cropper because um i i, I, I either didn't pick up on it or i just blatantly blasted past it and ignored the fact that while you can so this is another thing you can equip anyone with any archetype mm -hmm. they'll start with one but you can yeah. just go nah no actually no so i did that and i mm -hmm. came a bit of a cropper difficulty wise later because it, there's a there are characters i think the earlier characters who they want you to sort of that you don't have to and again i didn't but they want you to follow a lineage like if the first character is stroll and yes. they want you him to be like a melee character. I, th I think yeah. I totally ignored that because I didn't spot the stat difference. I just didn't spot it. <laughs> and so I I took him all the way down the mage class to the point where I was okay. very late game and going, shit. Yeah, if I, if I, if I, well, yeah, kind of. Like if I equip him with a sword or, or sword based or some sort of melee based archetype, his attack's big. Yeah. But I, well, I, you do yeah, get I a lot of items. Issue. You did it as well. Oh no, I had the I was the opposite. I was like, oh, okay. well, this guy's a sword master. He's my warrior. He can just stay as that. And same yeah. with pretty much everyone's and you know, just sort of Yeah, it, I'd, it I'd almost did well. the opposite. Like so yeah. I won't name names, there's no point, but there's like characters that let's say the character that starts as a thief ended up as my gunner. Although I don't know that that's that's too bad, that one. Um yeah. there is a character you get quite late who I just left basically alone because they were melee again. But but with Stroll yeah. and with Hulkenberg, the two like, the first two characters, I basically ignored what the game was trying to hammer me over the head with a little bit but it is doable which is pretty cool but i did you you can get items that so there's so there's character levels and xp but there's also mm -hmm. archetype levels and xp two different currencies and you do get items yeah. that you can like and they become there there is something you can do that makes that so irrelevant like yeah. you can if you max a, an archetype because there's no further for them to level for no further things for them to do every time you you ping a level you'll get like um what are they called like hero's fruit or something like that yeah that basically that's an item that gives yes. you that experience that you can just pump yeah. into one of the other archetypes or yeah. another character so i did switch him eventually realize i did eventually realize 60 hours later plus that i was like ah oh, yeah he probably should be a melee character i'll um give him a sword I'll, or I'll something i guess a sword and you know the the character that starts with a sword and is sword based and is called sword master and okay that will go that but i just I, I kind of wanted to test it and it is doable it does make it harder yeah it does I can imagine. <laughs> and 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 like we won't get deep into it because i mean we could talk for so long about this game but what we both yeah. agreed on one thing is that the, without no spoilers by the way obviously it no. the end what would you say last five ish hours i think the last five ish hours are just a little bit more than you need yeah it's yeah. not it's not terrible i wasn't like playing it and thinking like god i wish no. i was doing something else i was more just like i think i couldn't like if it had ended now i'd be all right i've seen i've like had as much of this game and like it's yes. a big complaint to make because it's well a, a small complaint to make i suppose really because it's like i really really enjoyed this game i didn't not enjoy the last five hours and i really really enjoyed 65 hours so like you know. that, that, i was thinking the same thing when i was thinking that i was like that is such a weird thing because like if you had 65 hours of anything that you really liked mm -hmm. although five hours is a lot and it is a it's a you know it is a lot yeah <laughs> it's but I mean, don't most Atlas games? I don't want to say they fully shit the bed in the. But they don't... I think they literally all do this. Yes, I was going to say like most <laughs> like... of the ones I've got that far in. I'm like, I, I, I mean, I'm listen. I don't need a game to be seventy hours. I, I don't. No. I just don't like. I'm uh, if this was. Although I will say, of all the ones I've played, mm -hmm. and you've played more of them than me, so make sure you, you know this is more. What do you think of this statement? I think the side content in terms of the character stuff is some of the best like the uh, yeah, stories so told too. they've all got their own really strong stories on the side yeah there's some that are like full-on like you like if someone said like 
they saw this bit and cried, I'd be like, yeah, fucking yeah. like fair enough. Like there's some there's some heavy fucking content in here. Like it's mm. there's like some there's some tragic characters in this, and it's a it's quite a dark story in general. Not to yeah. say that they aren't in the others, but I think because it's like this more medieval fantasy yeah. type type of setting, like compared to fun school times where you're all dicking around in class type thing there's a there's a little bit of an element of it being that little bit more sort of serious and tense like it's this full-on like political intrigue story in this world where everyone's a fucking racist to your character like and, and the side stories delve into sort of dark stuff i don't want to yeah you know there's no point in spoiling but like i'm trying to think if any of them do, a lot they've all they're all yeah, very, yeah, very emotional. Like you said, if 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 someone, like you said, if someone said they cried at X or Y, I'd be like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And yeah, it's just there's a lot of things that we could talk about and that we love about this game. Yeah. Like it's it's really, really good. I think it's to me, it is on the level of a lot of the personas. It's probably not above Persona Five, which is my personal favorite based on sort of like modern standards but mm. uh but it's it's very good for that i think stuff like i really like how different all the like dungeons are and the different mm-hmm. activities are because it feels a bit more varied than like start of this year we did what persona 3 reload and you're in tartar tartarus the endless oh, yeah. repeating dungeon for that's randomly generated for a long as shit time and like Again, that was another game I really, really enjoyed and mm. enjoyed my time doing that. But like, I really do appreciate that being not quite the case in this one. And you know, it's sort of the same with Persona Five. So I think, I think it would be a little bit harder to go back to some of the earlier, yeah, Persona games. But I think, well, especially the earliest. But you know, the earlier, <laughs> even modern Persona games. But uh, this is very much like modern sensibilities, easy to just dive into and then difficult to stop playing once you do <laughs> that that i definitely agree with as well like it's really hard to put down and it is snappy if that makes sense. yes it's really snappy. Um, I, the only thing i would sort of not urge caution but like i would say if anyone goes in expecting like this revolutionary different atlas game yeah that's the only thing it's, it's not, not that. that it's just if, not it, if you hate persona you're not going to suddenly no. love this but no. like, alongside this as well i think there's a demo that's like five to ten hours yeah. long or something stupid so like yeah no that, that's a great show actually so play the demo i mean you've lost nothing but time then if you don't like it but like it, it, it carries on when you have the full game as well so it's right. not like you'd have to do that again because it's easy to get caught up in the hype of everyone. So it's been very, very well received this game, and you know, rightly so, obviously. But like, it, it is one of those where it's like I can't. It's it's really odd. It's and with, this is this. I'm going to say the same thing about Silent Hill Two, which is a great way to seg into it. I like it, but I can't just go. Everyone should play this. I can't yeah. because it is a very specific type of RPG, and there are very specific rules you must play within that if you don't like, it's that they, they will not. And those this is atlas's way and yes rightly or wrongly then it's kind of yeah it is what it is and i and the reason i seg into silent hill 2 there is i was talking to um steve mr chambers who is the theme tune writer for yes. the podcast uh, the patreon only podcast on patreon.com slash god is a geek um and he was saying it really sounds like silent hill 2 is one i should play but he hates scary games <laughs> I shit out a look then, Steve. <laughs> this is the thing. It's like I. It is phenomenal, but I cannot recommend it to everyone because it is. Well, no. I'll pause there. You tell me. You've started playing it. How you played the original? I played the original. You sort yep. of know roughly what to expect. You started it. You tell me. Okay, I'm three hours in. I believe okay. at the time of recording. So not like you know no, no. enough to know early impressions. You've shot a gun. I've shot a gun. I've. <laughs> seen some monsters i've done some stuff (laughs) this is difficult for me though because everyone is talking about how scary this game is how incredible this game is and i i'm uh, unfortunately going to be someone who says to me it's like i'm like it's like i'm playing another silent hill game and i'm and you know that's what it is obviously but like i'm playing it and i'm like I've jumped once. There was a time where I jumped and was like, uh, oh. but like I can't say I've been necessarily like hugely scared struggling to play really? it or anything like that. I've just sort of been, you know, trundling along going through it's got all the Silent Hill stuff of, oh, you suddenly get to a big building, better walk into all the doors and then they yes. don't open. There's a and... trophy for that. Have you got that yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, got that, that in like an hour. <laughs> yeah, same. I was like, Oh, oh, I'm not supposed to be playing it like this, but every door's getting tried. 
Yeah, they are. Yeah. You're damn right they are. Yeah. I need to know. I need the um, ammo. Yeah. But, like, it's, again, I'm saying this, and I'm not saying, like, and I'm not having a good time. Like, no. If I was scoring what I'm doing right now, I'd be like, solid 8 out of 10. I'm going to play it to the end. I'm having fun. It's mm -hmm. a good horror game. I like a good horror game. But, like, I'm kind of struggling with a lot of people's opinions and reviews and stuff that I've seen are very much like this is this like seminal, amazing, best remake ever. Like I can't play yeah, anything else fair. after it. And I'm playing it now and I'm thinking like, it's like maybe almost as good as Silent Hill Downpour, but I'm not sure. I quite I like Downpour. That was that. the most recent one. Like okay. the most recent one, like well over a decade ago. But you yeah, know, well, that was yeah. the most recent one. And like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's... Like, like, I'm, and I'm not saying that the next what it's about fifteen, twenty hours, something like that. S something like that. I mean, I'm nine and a half hours in, so I'm in yeah. time of recording. I should hope so to like, be done the, soon. But... The first three hours, I might like it. Might amp up even more. I might really enjoy it, and I'm still enjoying it. It's a great horror game. It was a great yeah. horror game, yeah. and it's a very good way of remaking it because I feel like modern sensibilities wise, it's really nice to not be playing like a sort of like tougher to control very janky moving around obviously visually less impressive game like it's it's a lovely modern sensibility sort of game like the combat is while kind of deliberately a bit clunky it's not like it's not you basically can't do it you're just sort of flailing around and hoping something happens like there's enough of a nuance of oh if i can get a couple of hits and then dodge right and i know this enemy and stuff like i might be able to get past it without getting hit maybe i'll get hit once um yeah and it's it, it's 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 a very easy it's calling it easy to play doesn't seem like it <laughs> works with what everyone else's opinion i know but what it's you mean easy to play in terms of like i'm not like thinking like oh i'm having to wrestle with the game you know no, like, no it feels good yeah um and it's got all the you know it's, it, it is it's just so silent hill because yeah i'm someone who's played pretty much every silent hill game quite a few times because even the my... motion controlled wii ones do you remember them what were they yeah was that, that, yeah was that downpour uh no that was what's that was that shattered memories or is you were that walking around and the wii mote was a torch wasn't it yeah and you had to there was remember. a bit where you colored in a house and then the house yeah. was that color God, yeah that's, that's a long yeah it's it's do you know what? it's nice to see it back actually it is nice to see it back and it's and it's yeah, it, it's nice to see it back. It's very Silent Hill. Like it's it's got those the puzzles where you'll go into a room yeah. and you'll be like, "Here's this stupid riddle. Hopefully, <laughs> you can figure out where yeah. these coins go in this box to make it open." And all this sort of things. It's like it's it's full on traditional. It is like survival horror. It's not it's not like modern. You don't have weapons. Run away and hide. Or no, like all about the spectacle it's like you're managing your resources you're doing puzzles you're exploring every fucking inch of a place to be able to find all the bits you need to get to the next bit of it uh and like so far i haven't like it's not been sort of so obtuse that i've been like oh i need to look things up and stuff like that which i have <laughs> there have been there have been many silent hills where i have too and i think after at some point in this you know, 15 to 20 hours, I'm sure I will have to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those where I was, ex I've kind of already been expecting to have to do that and yeah. it hasn't quite happened yet. So I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. <laughs> I, I do, I want to point out because there's a couple of things about it that I do, I, I understand what you're saying in terms of it being like this, the best thing ever. Like I, I get it. I, I am really, really enjoying it. But there are two sort of, they're both in the same ballpark. There are two elements of it specifically, I think are, I do think a best in class. I think the audio is unbelievable, and I mean that across the board. Because, like, ob do you know what? It didn't occur to me. Obviously, the the radio thing. So, if you've never played a Silent Hill game, you pick up a radio, and basically, the radio in the game goes static noise if an enemy's near, and it crackles and pops at you. Mm -hmm. And it just never once occurred to me that will come out of the dual sense. Yeah, that is very nice. It just never never occurred to me. And also it does this thing now. I don't know if this is by accident or if it's mm -hmm. intended. I, I have, I've played with the volume on the DualSense, so it won't be whatever the default is. But because it's also in the game's audio, yeah, I get like a bit of an echoey effect. I can see that, and yeah. And it fucking plays with you because it's already tense. And I think the audio in general, like the soundtrack, obviously ties into that. The soundtrack is unbelievable. To... I don't think I've ever sworn at a soundtrack before. 
<laughs> but you're walking around and it's like nothing's actually happening and the music then suddenly intensified and it's so and I don't remember if the original my memory of the original is I remember the first game more but I don't remember the audio for the, to the, the second game the original like it will pulse at you and make all this weird it, it, I always remember Silent Hill as this dissonant violin you know deliberately dissonant sounds with one another and it will pulse into life and you'll be like yeah yeah Oh no, you're just messing with me because that's what a lot of this game is. It's, it's mm -hmm. psychological messing it, with it you. It does that's like messing with you. Yeah. Um, in terms of jumps, it, it's interesting because I did see on Reddit like they, the Blueber team have been saying, "Oh, we want to make more games without jump scares." This game's got jump scares in it. It has. Like I know you're only three hours in. There's, there's one. I played a bit of it on Portal, thinking that'll make the tension easier. But of course, that also means headphones go on, so I get the audio even clearer in my ears. Yeah. And I, I forget what my wife was watching on telly, and I jumped so hard at a very specific moment that my wife turned and laughed at me. And like, <laughs> she doesn't like horror. And this is the other thing, by the way. I f didn't realize how big of a cultural thing Silent Hill was. She sort of came home from work, and I was playing it, and she was like, "Is that Silent Hill?" And I was like. How Why do you do know you... what Silent Hill is? And she goes, yeah. oh, I just, I just, I've heard of it. And I'm like, if it were Resident Evil, I'd have gone, yeah, no, it's Resident Evil. Of course it is. She's like, and she, she does know Resident Evil. But Silent Hill, I just didn't think was. Yeah. I mean, I guess this... it had like movies as well. Well, that's well, supposed to the thing. Like, like it did. Like, you know, I suppose that's true. Um, but on the audio front as well, while like the sound design is un unbelievably good, I do want to shout out a very specific thing I thought about this. And I don't know if you've played enough to have notice this because it's something that happens the further as you play in the story the voice okay. acting right i find it incredibly understated in a way very few games do that make you then when you play another game go god everyone's like overacting or hamming it up because play into the back of the room <laughs> yeah like james i was, I was talking again to steve about this because he's a big audio guy and i was talking to him about this and it's like this is a game where People converse, and again, I don't know how much of that you've had early on. A little bit, a, few, a little a few bit, people. but but they converse like real people. That there are, yeah, there are pauses, and I remember being taught in English like the, the pregnant pause before you deliver your action, but your news. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot of that. It isn't just like there is somebody who has read a line of dialogue. It is it is voice actors who have been directed in a really specific way that I don't think I've seen that often done so deliberately like that and and as you progress in the game and there are other characters you interact with and it gets a bit more crazy of course that's that's intentional as well but i yeah. really thought the dialogue was was performed in a really good way like it's um like even at the start of the game when james is sort of talking it's quite quiet he's yeah it's it's very odd he's he's not he's not this big bombastic no. horror character he's just like a guy talking like a very normal man who's doing yes. he's in a place that is not at all normal but he's not like he's not like having these big shit oh my god we have to get out of here big moments with these people he's just sort of like yeah i'm kind of here for a reason too and it's yeah i hope you're all right like you know like it's a very normal like it's a very like sort of yeah understated normal but not normal like it's yeah <laughs> it's like in some respects it's like why aren't you screaming? Yes. And and but again, it's so well done. Like you know, I mean, very early on, you walk into a graveyard that's fucking covered in fog. That would be enough for me to go. I'm gonna get in the car and leave. Back we go. This that's. I don't enough. know why I'm here in the first you know, place. I, this is a bit I, daft. It's ripped. All of this is silly. Let's just go home. And and the fact apparently there's a trophy if you try and do that. Apparently there's a trophy if you try and leave like, oh, at the start of the game. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, there are new endings apparently. I don't know what they mm, are. That's interesting. But I kind of want to know what they are because I know yeah. what all the other endings are. And and but like there are I think is it two? I'm not sure. I think there are at least a couple of new endings. I don't know how you get them. I don't know if anyone's worked out how you get them. Um, I don't know if they're significant. I, I just know yeah. that that's a thing. Um, the endings were always quite interesting in Silent Hill in that, like, you had, if you interacted with one character differently mm -hmm. and didn't use enough, like, health potions, so her, your character was, like, in pain for more of it, you would get a different ending and stuff like that. If you, so, if you look at certain items in your inventory too often, apparently there's... Um, um, yeah, yeah, that sort that, of thing. That yeah, sort of like, that's pretty clever. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I will it, say, I'm quite pleased with Blue Team because I, I always felt they kind of had one in them. Like, I always felt they yeah. got very close... Um, I've always liked but never loved what they, they developed and I would never have in a million years have gone, yeah, it'll be Silent Hill 2 will be the one that they'll 
I'll smash it with like if, never. I mean, if if there's gonna be one that you knock it out of the park for, though, this is a pretty good one to do it with, isn't it? <laughs> they probably had to. Like they, they probably so. had to. Like they, you know, who God, God knows. Maybe a year ago they were saying to Konami, "Yeah, we're ready," and they Konami were like, "No, you're not. This isn't finished." Yeah. You know, I, it feels like one where nobody involved could have let this be anything other than a very, very good video game. Uh, and yeah, enjoying it a lot. Yeah, I feel like it could take me to Christmas to finish because I, I feel, every time I play it, I'm like, oh, I've been playing for hours. I'm like, oh no, it's been half an hour. It, yeah, it's the sort of one where when my phone goes off, I go, I'll just check that, just check that quickly. Yeah, just... Quick, oh okay. yes, quick break, yeah, quick phone break. Okay, oh, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah. Okay. Um, and I feel yeah. like I might have been a little hard on it at the start, but realistically, I'm really excited to play more. I want to see the rest of this game out. Like, I'm not but, stopping anytime but, but soon. When a game comes in with that much hype. Yeah, that's all that happened, I think. More and I any. think the same will happen for some people with Metaphor Re Fantasio. I do. Oh, I yeah, think these probably. are two games that you have to. Not. It is still Silent Hill 2. It like like it Metaphor Re Fantasio is still a Persona Re Atlasy game. Like it. Mm-hmm. If you go in expecting, you see the revolution. Hype you go, Damn, I have to like yeah. do this. It's going to be this landmark moment in my life. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, look, I said with Steve, you saying, oh, everything you're saying, he loves audio, blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, but I really don't think you'll be able to play it if you fu- if you struggle with horror games. Yeah, like, this is one know of the more horror intensy ones I've ever played. Hundred percent, and he he struggles a lot. Bless he struggles him. with horror games. He does. He does. He doesn't need that in his life. <laughs> no, um, no, like you can, you, yeah, but I, I don't know how I've not because I'm not really a horror guy. I like my I like Resident Evils and I and I love my Silent, yeah. Silent Hills and God what were they back in the day Parasite Eve that was one wasn't it Yeah like I, did I loved like... a bit of Clock Tower and Haunting Ground Yeah and... but see like I wouldn't go out of my way to I, well I wouldn't at all I think I remember watching Blair Witch when it first came out but I don't seek out horror films I'm not the horror guy at all mm. But see, I just, we really are in this house Yeah well that's so the thing so like maybe that's why it's everything. more like killing me sort of thing like you know Yeah I just really I'm really enjoying it Um um, but before we do end up this pod, this week's podcast, I did want to talk about a game that we talked about before. But like, there's a couple of reasons we're coming back to UFO 50. Is one, Lyle never had a chance to talk about it, and maybe we can hear his favourite games on there if you can remember the names of them. I've got a few new ones. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, I've got one that you might, I, I suspect you'll like. So, um, but yeah. also, like, there's a lot we can't talk about, and it just makes more sense to let's have a talk about UFO 50 because I talked about it, Lyle. You reviewed yeah. it, so it's only I reviewed fair. it. I love it. It's one of my favourite games of this year. But to call it a game is weird because it is in fact 50. Uh, but yeah, we like, I think when we talked about it, I mean, we were expecting me to be here and I sort of had to pull out the podcast yeah, yeah, last week. So. so you were like, well, I'll sort it. But I think you'd played like 20 of the games at the uh, time. And do you know what? I still haven't like played that. all 50. Yeah. I think Which I'm approaching 40. Yeah. So you're getting there. You're getting there well. But like, yeah, this is, it's such a bizarre game. A collection of 50 games released on a fictional console was, by was a that fiction. a 50 in inverted commas there it is a 50 in because i've heard commas. since that there may be 50 games on this game yes maybe 50 mm. it's but there's yeah there's some there's some secret things going on which i think i mean the main sort of secrets i think have been discovered by have they? the community but i also don't want to say oh yes everyone's seen everything because yeah no i mean i haven't i just know that there are 50 games and that's kind of it. yeah i see it keeps getting updated and i keep thinking what's he, what are they sneaking in what are they sneaking what are you in doing because <laughs> I, I forgot the spelunky thing that game was like full to the brim of weird hidden shit that people still yeah. make make sure you get this item from this bit and find a hidden entrance here and yeah then die on this level in particular yeah, I've completed. I've completed Spelunky with the with the yeah. real ending. I know what's up, um, yeah, but um, but yeah, there's like basically it's still fifty retro games that have been you know freshly made, so they're not really retro. And the whole point of it is, although they have these technical limitations, they don't have limitations of like back then people didn't make games that were souls likes or metroidvanias in the 80s you know what i mean yeah. whereas here they're like we are using as many modern game ideas and sensibilities as we can to make these games that are you know retro technically and the end result is 50 games where pretty much every single one of them is really interesting in its own right and has something about it that's like I've not really played anything like this before, uh, or you know, at least some twist that makes it a bit weird. So I, I actually played this game last night because I didn't have that much time, and I was like, well, I've not, you know, 
I, I reviewed the game, but I didn't finish no, all but 50 games. that's what games I do. When it. you're like, I want to play something, but well, I'm like, well, I just have a quick go on one of them. Just go on one of them quickly. So I went on, I and I had played them all by before I, you know, did the review. But mm. I had, I'd, you know, done like 20, 30 minutes in some of them because you can't dive into every single game. In this and collection. some are better than others. That's, that's, that's and not, some are. Yeah. But yeah. the one I was playing like last night was this. Is this one where it's like a sort of like a a smash TV top down shooty one where uh, it's like there are sp- specific rounds that you have to do where it, it, like it'll be full of enemies and when you've killed all the enemies you can buy upgrades and uh, what's weirdly what's this weird like twist on this game is that you basically pick how many enemies you face in each round mm-hmm. so. You finish the first round and you maybe like purchase one upgrade and then because you've just got a bit of currency and then for every additional enemy type you add to the next round you'll get an extra hundred coins which you can spend on more upgrades kind and it sounds like the way like shooters are now at like csgo and yeah uh, so it's Valorant. like so like you'll do this first round and then if you're really trying to like make sure you get enough currency to get the the best weapons so you'll be able to beat like the final nightmarish wave you'll maybe pump like five or six enemies in and it'll be a fucking nightmare but if you can survive that you've suddenly got loads of money and you can upgrade the next one and add more enemies for the next round but if you die you die that's it you restart so it's this like really weird risk reward just like really cool idea where you don't really know what you're necessarily going to face but you're like if i can just add a few more enemies i'll maybe be able to make it through and if you you know push yourself really hard, you'll actually be able to beat the last stage. I still haven't, but this was this mm. game that I was playing. I was playing it for an hour, and just like retrying, <laughs> pushing my luck a little bit, not quite making it. And I just had this hour of playing this one retro game, which I wouldn't even say is necessarily one of the most like landmark, sensational games in this collection. But it's just one that has a really unique idea. And when I got stuck into it, I was sucked in. I was playing it for an hour. I would, if if I had more free time and not other games to play, I'd play it for another hour the next day and the next day until I, you know, had been it. That's one game out of fifty. And then mm. there's there are so many others. One of my favorites, I think, the first one that ever sucked me in is a game where it, you you play as a little submarine with a with googly yeah. eyes on, and it's like essentially it's like Subnautica, but. 2d where you sort of have to dive as deep as you can past all these underwater things some of which will be kind of dangerous and there are little upgrades you can gather and when you grab like a fuel upgrade you'll obviously be able to make it further that and... that was one i played i don't know if you did this where i played it, i'm like okay i'm gonna go back to that one and and i See, i haven't yet but i tend, intend to go back that one i really like it's like i got metroid vania vibes yeah, definitely. And for me, that was the inst- it, that it was the opposite. Where I was like, I played it for like five hours and wow. was like, yeah, I'm st- like, I'm enjoying this, and I've not finished it. And it's a great little like, it's, it's, it, this is a game where if it was released as an indie game on its own for a tenner, and yeah. people played it, they'd be like, oh my god, this is amazing. No one's ever done this particular. Yeah thing combined and it's it's this fantastic experience and it's one of 50 games again there's a golf rpg where (laughs) you like it's open world and you get upgrades of extra shots yeah 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 that one's hard Um, that was very hard but really interesting not like anything else i've ever played like these are games that are stylized as 80s games but are unlike games that i've ever played and if you wanted Mm. to say like complete everything in this game there is each of the games you can get like you can turn them gold by completing the game generally or you know an equivalent to that or there's like a thing where you could turn them a a, a cherry color with by doing some sort of ridiculous challenge on it and it's so hard to do that on almost any of them them. like i i think i have like i've completed technically like five of the games and got the special bonus objective in like two or three and i've got like 20 25 hours in this game at this point Mm. like and i could have so much more like there's a full jrpg in here i don't know how long it is but it's just sat there it's just sat there waiting and (laughs) at some point at some point i'd like to think that i'll play through it but i've played like an hour of it it was really cool the sequels thing is interesting to me, right? Because yeah. we mentioned on last time I spoke about this, and, and so I won't repeat it too much. But like, there's a whole fictional world. Like the the game wants you to buy into that it really is, um, you know, a, a publisher and a console that we've discovered, sort of yeah. thing. And, and so there are sequels. So one. <laughs> so do you, do you remember the name Campanella? Do you, do you remember that game? Yes, the, so that is three of them. 
Yeah, there are. Yeah, the, so the first one's pretty simple. Um, and at the time we first spoke about it, I played the first one. And you're basically just holding a button and moving your UFO sort of ship around little courses and you have to avoid Dodging everything. little things. It's yeah. quite fun. It's quite, it is quite fun. Difficult, but fun. Campanella 2. <laughs> I did this thing mm-hmm. where I, I very briefly forgot it was none of this was real. And yeah. I was almost like, oh, why have you done this with the sequel? It's like, no, stop a minute. <laughs> right? Because there's also a third one I haven't tried. But, but like the Campanella 2, it, it it's so clever because it's like, it is, it's like, it's the way modern video games have sequels. And it's it's like I actually I think I prefer the first one, but only because the second one's so much bigger and like you get out of the ship and you shoot yes. things and it's like I kept dying over and over again. I thought well, every time I go down somewhere I die and I realize oh, it's full damage. You twat. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that one's interesting. Um, one that I've played a lot of recently. Again, the names of these games are all kind of weird, and also when it's fifty compressed into one, it's easy to forget. But caramel, caramel. Okay, I recognise the name. So it's it's a, it's a it is. R-type style shooter where you start okay. with zero lives and you have to take photographs to increase your score and stuff. Yes. And that game's wild in, in, in terms of... I started it and I was like, this is all right. Yeah, it's a good shooter. Very difficult. What's this weird photo thing? I can shoot things and I can take fo- like the Polaroids. What What's this all about? Moved on. And I came back to it. I'm like, what is that? Because fo- there's one thing the game doesn't do and it's deliberate and some people won't like it and some will is it doesn't explain a lot like it doesn't tell you an, an awful lot about every mechanic which no, is by I design mean, yeah it's like what would happen back in it's, the time yeah. like you would you'd open a game you'd maybe get a screen of text that was story you've got two buttons and exactly you just have to fucking that. figure it out but i haven't beaten the first level of caramel caramel yet right mm-hmm. But I keep playing it over and over again because I want to get a higher score. And the Polaroid thing is so weird and interesting. And it's like, I have never seen this. Before. And I'm sure there is some weird shmup somewhere in the lands that has done something like that before. But for me, I like shmups. You know, like, yeah. this is like, I have never seen it. This is insane that this is just. In a collection of fake video... Well, they're not fake games. It's, I don't know how do you refer to these. Fake yeah. real games. Real fake Fake tools. real games. I don't yes. know. Like, it's it's really addictive. Um, And even some of the stuff that is in there that you have seen before, like Ping Golf, the one which is yeah. just like... It's very similar to... I forget the name of it. There's loads of popular mobile golf games where you just... Yeah. Bloody it's hard, just like by a, the way. A, a fun bounces around yeah. a lot golf game to a, on like yeah. a side scrolling perspective. I, I don't think there's, I mean, pff, there might be. I don't think there's any more to that one than there is. The, uh, first impression. Another one, Rail Heist, is another one that I played. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Uh, some sort yeah. of w- Western, uh, like, you know, like, like cowboy stealth Western thing. Hitman type stealth thing. turn based Hitman. Yeah. <laughs> Where like everything, you're on a timer, and the enemies are on a timer, and you play it, and you're like, "This is this this cannot just be part of a collect this this." People would buy it, like you said. If this was just an indie game, people would buy that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's yeah. Like there there are a few of the ones I played recently that I really like. Caramel, caramel, I loved. Um, I did do that thing twice where I, of the sequel. I played more more told two. And yeah. I was like, no, I don't like this. This is too much. And I was like, God's sake, stop it. Like, it got to me twice where I was like, fucking hell. Um, and actually, then the more you play it, you're like, no, this is actually exactly how you would... If you, if someone gave you Mortal and said, we need a sequel, that's exactly how that game would have been built upon. Yes, and I, I, I cannot, I get that. I cannot get across how impressive that is to me that they managed... And like you say, I don't know what Campanella 3 will be. Maybe it's a bloody first-person shooter. Maybe they do like a Metroid thing or something. Like I don't know. Maybe. It wouldn't Maybe. surprise me. It's just yeah. there's so many attention to detail. Like as you get further into the games, what from one through fifty, if if you play in that order, you don't have to um, progress through the the years of the fake developer um, and the intro movie changes like to, 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 as with the times. Yeah, the logo is updated because it and there's a bit more like you know animation. So I mean, the yes. first like I think three games, there's no scrolling of the screen, no. and then when you look at the notes in like the fourth or fifth, it says, "Oh, we discovered screen scrolling in this one and how to do that." So this game's like this scrolling arcade game, and like 
early on especially it's like these games they're very fun but like the first few are like i understand that this is a very old game i could probably enjoy well this is a very old game i've done it as well brand new you know if you know i understand that this is like a technically limited game and i might not get like you know 10 hours of fun out of it or want to do like but like maybe in the right situation i might fancy like you know Going, going via scores and things like that, where and then you get further in, and then the games just sort of get exponentially more interesting and different, and unlike anything else. I just want to finish one of them. I just want to feel like. Oh, have you not done one no, yet? Because they because they're old games. Like these are games from when that would have existed. Well, they they sort of wouldn't because they're too advanced. But also, they would have when I was a kid. And I'm like, I yeah. played stuff that looked like this. Why can't I do it? Why can't mm-hmm. I do any of this? But no, I, I UFA fifty. Yeah. I say the more I play of it, the more like it just yeah, it's such an impressive collection. It's such an achievement mm. to that this has been made. This shouldn't have been made. There's no reason that this should have been a game that could like well a collection of games that would be created uh, where you know realistically budgets and publishers yeah. and things like that everyone should be saying no stop it yeah you can't do this many games call, this call is it stupid. ufo 20 and then do a sequel ufo 22 or something yeah. can put them in the but just put yeah no it, it wouldn't yeah it's mad it, it is it's completely baffling oh also quickly because mm. you mentioned campanella so much did you play the campanella racing game there's also a spin-off racing campanella game That's i good. don't know i did play a few i played a few racing games but i don't it's like what, Little spaceship racing around little circuits against other spaceships, and you can hit them into walls and stuff. I think I did, and I don't think I even realised it was related. So yeah, it's a little spin-off. There are there are other games where, like, there's a really late on in the collection. There's a game that's sort of a bit Smash Bros. esque, oh. and all the different characters are from other games earlier in the collection. Oh, that's like, great! Yeah, it's just so clever, so cool. Like, it's. It's gonna be a game that at the end of the year I am I am talking about a lot. I can't necessarily say it's going to be one that the entire team in end of year podcast will be able to Fair. you know back me on. But like there's so many fucking games this year, it's gonna be hard for anyone to I do that. I mean there's fifty in that collection. Like that's the joke <laughs> of it. Isn't it? We, we could do a special bonus category, top five UFO fifty games. I'd do that. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm up for that. Even if it's just us two, we could yeah, do that's that. Fine. that yeah, no, that's all good. Uh, speaking of all good, that's a podcast for this week. Thank you to Lyle for yeah. being here. Um, I think Mr. Hyde is back next week. Uh, there'll be more games to talk about. Played so much recently that like I don't even mm. want to start. It's it's got it's properly into game season. Um, but if you enjoyed this, make sure you you know whatever you whether you're listening audio or video. If you're on audio, I don't know nowadays. Review it, I guess. Put a star yeah. on Spotify or by heart or whatever it is. Like fun. it. If you're on video, subscribe, hit the bell button, which you, know, you see it there. And if you want to get this podcast early, you can go to patreon.com slash God is a Geek. You'll get the early version in audio and video and an exclusive podcast. Um, I think we're trying for every few weeks called the Smaller Games Fun Time Chat, where we talk about smaller indie games for about 10 minutes at a time, three three an episode. Um, uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, thank you again to Lyle and to everybody else. We'll speak to you next week or next episode or whenever you choose to listen. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>